there's been more people liberated in all the history of civilization by information technology in the last 35 years than all the wars and revolutions in human history. And now I'd like to show you what some of those technologies are because we have such a panorama of human ingenuity going, going on that are bridging the challenges and making it possible for people with a variety of challenges or disabilities or even temporary impairments to be able to perceive and participate in ways that simply weren't possible before. Living in a digital age means that everything's now digitized. It means that things that words, ideas, innovations that couldn't be perceived before can now be perceived by everyone. Let's look at what some of those technologies look like. When we talk about an assistive technology, we're talking about something that helps us overcome a disability or an impairment. Some assistive technologies are designed specifically to take care of a disability. For instance, when we think, let's say, of a, if I had a wheelchair here in front of me, a wheelchair is something you really wouldn't use for anything but a mobility challenge. On the other hand, there's other technologies, something like Skype. Lots of people use Skype for typing back and forth to overcome various disabilities, even though Skype was not designed as an assistive technology. Now, when we talk about electronic assistive technologies, we're talking about assistive technologies that were specifically designed to overcome challenges in the digital world. And we can think of them generally in two categories as hardware assists and software assists. Let's look at some of the ones that are most uh, prevalent. Take, keeping in mind that in general, when we identify an assistive technology, typically we're either substituting one human sense for another, for a, one that is, for a sense that isn't, that, that isn't available to us right then, or we're taking a sense and magnifying it. So for instance, let's say someone can't read, and maybe they can't read because they don't know how to read, or maybe they can't read because they can't see the letters. Either way, we can use the ear instead of the eye. And so we have technologies that read things out loud. A screen reader then is often the most common example of an assistive technology that's accommodated through good web design. And so a screen reader will simply read the content out loud if the website, if the product, if the PDF, if the document is designed to be read out loud. And so one of the key things we do to websites is make sure that they work well with screen readers. We have a number of other technologies, though, that can help us as well. For instance, we have software that's actually designed to optionally read out loud. If someone can read, but they can't read little things, we have technology that magnifies, makes things larger. And one of the great things about Windows 8 over Windows 7 or Mac OS is that there's screen magnifiers built right into the technology so that the operating system helps you enlarge things so you can see them better. Instead of reading, we can use the sense of touch. And so we've all heard of Braille. And so here's a case where if someone can't see, they can still read by being able to feel the letters. But that technology has manifested itself in the online world through using innovation in Braille. So for instance, if you have an iPhone, this clever guy in the United States designed this thing called Speed Dots. And what it is is a screen protector that goes right on your iPhone and lets you feel where, all the, where the keyboard is, as well as protecting the phone at the same time. We have much more sophisticated technology as well, though. For instance, uh, refreshable braille display is a technology that has a series of dots which pop up to be just like braille and they keep popping up and showing different information depending on what's going on right now and in this case this is integrated into this entire device which is a smartphone for people who can't see so of course it's got no display but it has all the other attributes a camera and a, a, a braille line display now, if you can't type, and maybe you can't type because you don't know how to touch type, or maybe you can't type because your, your, your hands shake, or, or perhaps you don't have use of your fingers at all, and so we have technologies that allow you to speak. Now, here's another case where designing for the extremes is benefiting everyone, because, of course, in the last few years, 
the ability to direct our smartphones and who knows it's sometime soon perhaps our automobiles through voice has become something that we're all enjoying but the technologies behind Siri and Google Now started two decades ago as technology be being developed specifically for people with extreme difficulties now if you can't uh, if you can't type as well you could perhaps use different parts of your body to be able to simulate typing. I'm showing a picture of a child and she's wearing a sip puff device. This is a device that, let's say you're quadriplegic, you, can't, you have no use of your limbs below your neck, but wearing this headset, she can sip and puff on a straw and that's just like left clicking or right clicking a mouse. And by moving her head around, that's like moving the mouse around. So using this device, she can she can navigate any website in the world. Well, not any website. She can navigate websites that have been designed according to the standards that are becoming ubiquitous. And these are the very standards that are linked to the legislation that we'll be speaking about later. The key is if you create your website to be accessible, then your website's going to work with all of these technologies, as well as technologies that haven't even been invented yet. See, the key to future-proofing your website, the way of inoculating it against future innovation, is to follow the standards. Anyone designing new technologies today, new assistive technologies, is designing them in such a way that they're going to comply with the same standards. So we can't anticipate what's coming next. But we know that if we follow these standards, our sites will already be compliant with browsers and technologies that haven't even yet been invented. Here's another example something coming down the pipes hard. Instead of using a mouse, you can just look and blink. This is a technology called the Nouse, nose and mouse, because what it does is the camera in the laptop tracks where your nose is, and by tracking where your nose is, it knows where your eyes are. So the idea is you just look at what you want, and then you blink. Not a, and it can tell the difference between like a clearing my eyelids blink and a let's launch the missile blink. So the nouse, this type of technology is becoming, is becoming so uh, attractive that uh, Lenovo is planning on building nouse-like technology into all their laptops over the next couple of years. Imagine people wandering around with their, with their, with their tablets blinking and stuff that's coming, coming to a tablet near you. Now when you combine that with the ability to have an on-screen keyboard, it means that you can potentially choose letters as well. So it means someone can type just by looking and blinking. That opens up all sorts of possibilities for people with extreme situations as well as anyone who would enjoy the efficiency of that. Another swap is if you don't have the ability to hear at a certain time or the ability to speak, we have alternatives using gestures of using typing, of being able to watch someone as they do sign language. There are so many different techniques we've come up with to overcome and the new ideas are just propagating as more and more people are able to develop for tablets and all sorts of uh, new touch-based technologies. This is all about paddling towards an ideal situation. Our goal is simply to paddle towards a common ideal. That ideal is that no matter what your disability, no matter what your difficulty, no matter your skill level, no matter what browser you're using, what operating system you're using, what type of technology you're using, what speed your internet connection is, no matter what, that you should be able to access everything all the time. And you know what? We're never going to achieve that. And I don't want you to be intimidated by that because we don't have to do a perfect job. We simply have to do a better job than we're doing today. And if we simply exceed these minimum standards that have been established for us, we can include everyone. We can not just accommodate everyone, we can have the ability to delight everyone. And that's worth doing. Appointed a high-level advisor to the UN, David Berman has traveled to over 50 countries inspiring professionals on how we can design a better civilization. Rated number one in North America as a speaker on accessibility, he's presented at the largest design conferences on four continents. David has audited websites of 40 countries for the World Wide Web Foundation. His book, Do Good Design, is published in five languages.